We're back with the Honda S2000. I'm here with Tom. Yes. We have joint custody of this car. We do. We've been splitting everything right down the middle. We have. We're going to talk about our ownership experience thus far. We bought this in June of 2023. We've done quite a few things to it. Lots of little maintenance items, lots of tiny repairs. It's mostly stock. Most recently, it was detailed. So it's actually shiny now. This car has been repainted, except for maybe one fender. So we had to do a wet sand and then a polish, and then it's coated with, I don't know, some turtle wax ceramic spray. And by we, you mean the professional we hired to do the work. Exactly, yeah, we've paid Sonny from uh, M-Tech YouTube channel to detail it. And he did a really good job. We're still on Michelin X Ice Snow Winter Tires, which are just screaming for traction in today's 55 degree weather. We're gonna be putting the RE71 RS tires on here next week. So we'll finally have some grip. Which is where it should be. It, sh it, it shines, yeah, it, it shines. it was also with... phenomenal to drive in the winter as well. It was very entertaining. It was a lot of fun, a lot of sideways, a little bit sketchy, a couple moments here and there. A lot of funny looks. Yeah. Like, what are you doing driving <laughs> that in the winter? We got this, uh, we took it to Crown Rust Control, got it sprayed, undercoated, and zero rust all winter. Drove it through lots of salt, drove, drove it through lots of snow and water, and the underside is completely clean, which is great. I mentioned this in my last video, but we also did a 44 millimeter UK exhaust mod, which is basically just an exhaust bypass. Kind of hard to see from here, but I'll show you some footage underneath the car. It's uh, basically just connecting the muffler to the tailpipe and it, it makes some good sounds. Yeah, it bypasses a bit of the exhaust pipe. We haven't done a UK exhaust mod video with a top down, and that's where you hear it. So yeah. uh, this will be the first time we fire it up and listen to it with a top down. So let's go for a drive, and we'll talk about our ownership experience. Love it. The S2000's come a long way. We freshened it up. Tom was a little bit resistant on some things, but I'm glad we splurged on some cheap eBay replacement parts like yes. the steering wheel, the gauge cluster. S2000 is looking pretty fresh. Yes, this it is. needs a little bit of work. The seats are a little bit rough, but you know what? It's a driver and we love it for it. We got a newer steering wheel. Yep. New gauge cluster surround. Yep. New gauge cluster lens from s2000cluster.com. That's probably one of my favorite modifications. Yes, it's not scratched. We can actually it's see it. Brillo pad. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's bad. Sounds good. Yeah, the, the UK exhaust mod was phenomenal. Tricky job. Well, again, not something we didn't did, but uh, well worth it. Just gotta make sure you find the right shop to do it for you. Yep. Yeah, MRT did that. They did a pretty good job with it. It sounds nice, no drone, just the right amount of tone. Even just puts it around town, I don't think it makes a big difference. But once you start to get into it, it really starts to sing. Yeah, and it sounds really good from the outside. Yes. box ectomy. Yep, and got rid of the insulator. I still think we should get a K&N air intake someday. They make a little bit more power and they sound really good. That's the long one that goes down into the bumper, yeah. correct? Yeah. Or the, just the front. Let's just keep your eye out for one. Yeah. that perfect balance of intake, induction sound, and exhaust. Yeah, with the top off, it really is a different experience. Yeah, this car is best enjoyed topless. Yes. So, this is the first time either of us have joint owned a sports car, or any car, together. Yep. Tom and I have been, we've been like best friends since seventh grade. 
We've always kind of talked about this. Learned how to bunny hop bikes together. That's right. It's, it's, been, a, so far back. it's been a long journey. And this was kind of the perfect opportunity. We picked this up for 12 grand, shipped it out from Washington State to Michigan. And we've probably got about 18 into it. 17, 5, 18 ish, yeah. thereabouts. Uh, add in fuel and insurance and stuff. So, about what it's worth. We split everything right down the middle. It's kind of been perfect for my usage because I don't need a sports car all the time in my driveway, but I do like to drive it every now and then, occasionally on weekends, in the mornings, late at night, sunset, you know, just take it for a little rip. This is one of the few cars that I've ever owned that I just take it out for a drive for the heck of it. And uh, I think you kind of feel about the same way. Yeah, absolutely. It's a phenomenal car in that sense. It's a great entry, as far as cost goes, great entry price for something like this. Yeah. Um, as you mentioned, we paid 12 and we're into it around 18 now. So we, we have to, had to do some things and we did some things we probably didn't have to do, but still well within the reasonable ownership cost. But it's been a phenomenal car to go on. Neither, it's neither of our first or even second car. Um, and sometimes you're a little heavy with cars, with press cars. Um, so you're like, hey, can I put it in your driveway for a few days? Yeah. Even if I'm not going to drive it. So it's been phenomenal. It also helps that we live less than a mile apart from each other. That's right. It helps a lot. Don't lift. <laughs> We're going to lift for this uh, tire debris. <laughs> VTEC trumpets and glory. Yeah, I just love, so we, we did AP2 valve retainers and, and uh, the Billman timing chain tensioner and uh, we've done an oil change recently. Uh, I replaced the PCV valve. It's just smoothed out. We're running, what is it, Castrol, or no. Yeah. Castrol high mileage yeah. 5W30. Full synthetic. Full synthetic. Yeah. Feels great, runs great. Seems to burn a little bit less oil, though we need to get some more miles on it. Uh, when we do drive this car, we tend to drive it pretty hard because it's our fun car, it's our enjoyment car. Yeah, we don't take it for soft cruises. Yeah, and it's been great. How many miles have we put on this? About 3,000 miles? No, I, I think it's just under 4,000 or maybe at 4,000 now. I was kind of surprised at how few miles we put on it when I did the math the first time. I think a lot of the reason is because they're mostly shorter trips. Yeah. Sounds so good. They do, like yeah. When, like right where the edges. They kind of yaw and move yeah. around, and they are a little bit sketchy in the wet. That's the only thing. That can be fun if you're anticipating it. That's right. Yeah, if you're planning a little bit of a slide. In the winter, in the snow, they perform great. They're some of the best winter tires I've ever driven on. Yeah. I also think the, the phenomenal chassis helps with that as well. Yes. But it did very well in the winter. Our biggest uh, battle was just ground clearance if we got a foot of snow or whatnot, which we really haven't, so. Yeah. As I was saying earlier, we'll go, sometimes you'll have it for a week or whatever. Am I actually, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't driven the car in a couple of weeks. So, that last section where you wound it out to red line. I was waiting for the shift and waiting. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely 
one of the few cars I've ever driven where you have to train yourself not to shift just because that red line is so high. Shifter is amazing. It is one of the best. I think this gearbox was well cared for in its uh, previous one owner. No miss shifts, no gear grinds, hasn't popped out. We changed all the fluids as soon as we bought it. It's just a lovely thing. hear the exhaust when we first got this it had a pretty aggressive clutch rattle yes uh, around like 2500 oh. to 3500 rpm <laughs> yeah on deceleration yes. and you could tell it was the clutch because you push down the pedal and it would go away I found that's a pretty common thing with s2000s now even lower mileage s2000s that I've driven have it Not a lot of torque. You gotta rev it out. It lives in the higher RPMs. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, and honestly, that's the thing you have to expect with a car of this age and mileage and just condition is that you're going to have lots of tiny little annoying things that pop up that you'll have to address or some of them you just kind of let them go or you get in front of some which we've done that as well that's right common, yeah common issues seen amongst other s2000 owners that it's like hey I'd rather get in front of this and wait for it to happen so yep you've had since buying this you've had the chance to drive numerous other s2000s correct yeah some older some well not older but newer uh higher mileage lower mileage modification stock right you've had a pretty broad range yeah i've driven a really clean low mileage ap2 and i've driven uh some nicer ap1s um this drives great this drives as well as about all of them yeah and it has higher mileage and it will cost a lot less money so I think, you know, I wouldn't be too afraid to find a higher mileage S2000 if it's been well maintained, well cared for. Who knows how the previous owner drove this. Right. I have a feeling it wasn't driven hard. No, I don't think so. So that helps. No, knowing the owner, it was probably a drive to the golf course. Yeah. Enjoy himself. <laughs> sure. For a cruise. Top down. Ain't yeah. nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. Let's listen to this exhaust a little bit. Uh, sitting at 6'2", it is a little tight getting in and out. But once you're in there, it hugs you so nice. Yeah, I'm 5'10", you're 6'2", and we kind of have to do minimal changes to our seating position. And when you... I, I leave it. I don't change it. Yeah. That's impressive. Here, I'll get the door. I was thinking you were getting in here now. Uh, skinny shoes only, the pedal box. That's right. It's tight in there. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good now. It's just the perfect amount of throaty exhaust. Not too overbearing, not too overwhelming, not obnoxious. And just about every exhaust on the S2000 drones, and we did not want that. So I think this is, this is pretty perfect. Yeah, this is a 44 millimeter connector pipe for the UK exhaust mod. Sounds a little bit throatier. The bigger you go, the slightly louder it gets and the deeper the tone is. A lot of people do 38 millimeter. You can kind of go whatever size you want. I think 44 millimeter is two inches or 1.75 inches.
No, this is great. This is fine. Right. I'll have you drive some. Okay. I'll sit passenger. That's the other thing that I like about co-owning this is I trust you as a driver. We are both pretty kind should. to our cars. <laughs> and well, also like if something happened to this, like if it got dinged up or something in the driveway, this isn't a show car. Like it sits outside. It's not. Actually, once we got it detailed, we were kind of like, oh, we got to start actually taking care of the exterior. <laughs> I know, we were kind of bummed actually. We, we loved how it looked, but we were also like, ah, oh, it's the fun, the fun in games without having to worry about the exterior. It's over. <laughs> Yeah, we probably washed this like three times before it got detailed in six I mean, months, there you know? Was no, there was no point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the exterior definitely needed some love. Sonny did a great job. He did. He did a very good job. You replaced a couple speakers of this. The sound system's actually pretty decent now. Yeah, I, I replaced all the speakers. All two of them? All two of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, were, they were just blown out. They were the original factory speakers, so I, I think it cost 100 bucks or so to wire in some new ones. It's, I, you don't listen to much radio or music while you drive, but I, I like some tunes occasionally. So, yeah. yeah, overall, the co ownership, I'd say, has gone better than I anticipated. We learned a bit more about ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and each other. But I've, I've enjoyed it. It's good. It gives us an excuse to spend time together. And I see a little bit more of you these days. I've done a lot of work to this car. Yeah, that's an interesting way to go. <laughs> I think I've done more like little things to this car than I ever have any car that I've owned. It is a really easy car to work on. It's simple. Yeah. Um, that was going to be a strange comparison, but simplicity. And it's nice to have all the documentation on forums, on S2KI, on YouTube. There's some amazing YouTube channels that just show you how to fix everything on this car. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, we had a small the coolant leak, correct? Yeah. Um, for the oil cooler. And it was fully documented. I was able to do it in my garage. It didn't take long. Bleeding the cooling system was kind of a pain in the rear, but... Yeah, that just took time. Yeah, it was just tedious, yeah, not exactly. difficult. Yeah. Brakes are a little noisy. They are track pads. Hawk, Hawk HP Plus, I think. Of course they're track pads. <laughs> the world is our track. <laughs> I had lofty aspirations of tracking this, and it never happened. So I probably spent way too much money on pads and rotors that aren't even on the car. But we'll use them someday because we're keeping this thing. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to get rid of it. I thought. I thought that we might sell it at some point. Kind of toss the idea around. But we started to sort some things. We replaced the steering wheel. Put the new gauge cluster surround in. I think next we'll do the seats. We'll make those look a little bit nicer. But yeah. ultimately, I'm so happy with the car as it is. In stock form, it's just a great street car, and I don't want to ruin that by making it track capable. So. I would like to take it to some track days, see how it is in stock form, but get a baseline and go from there. Maybe rally cross, autocross. I mean, it, it can do so many. Yeah. And the only bummer is it's a bit awkward to throw a roll bar in here. And these are actually metal functional roll hoops. Like they'll keep you safe in the event of a rollover. Um, not sure about a high speed crash on track, but uh, you have to run either a hard top or a roll bar for SCCA Rallycross. I don't think we take this out in the dirt, but we take it out for a tarmac rallycross, which is really fun here in the Truett region. But we gotta get a hard top, and hard tops are like four to six grand. They're kind of expensive. Yeah, and they're just not plentiful. Yeah, there's they're very rare. At least OEM hard tops, which yeah. is what you'd have to run. Well, that's what you'd want to if you're safety or dependent. Yep. Oh boy. Lots of good driving out today. Yeah. It's also hard to part with it just knowing what we have into it and the fact that it's split costs. Yeah, I mean, you can spend anywhere between eighteen dollars to $40,000 for a, an S2000, depending on mileage. And... As far as driving,
driving goes, this drives as well as all of them. It could be cleaner inside and out, but again, it sits outside. It's the fun car. I want to be able to enjoy it. I don't want this to be like some investment garage queen. Um, and you well, know, if it, if it were twice the cost and twice the price, yeah. Um, you know, maybe we would we would have to worry about how the other one is treating it a little bit more. It's kind of the perfect car to share ownership. It is, it, that's, and that's exactly why we did it. Is because it was just a great opportunity to buy it. We got a good deal. It needed some work. We weren't afraid to do it, and it seemed like a low risk opportunity with uh, you know the chance that we could just have a good car for cheap and that's what that's exactly what we've done i think if we would have bought a nicer lower mileage one we would have had fewer issues to address but at the same time like nothing has been horrible and it's been fun making little incremental improvements over time yeah that's one of the i was almost going to say as fun as the driving experience has been but the driving experience You've been keeping me in check. Like, I usually kind of start to go a little crazy with mods here and there and start to spend probably more money than I should. And you've been... <laughs> you've been keeping us, like, on track with budget, which is great. Well, and, uh, earlier when I mentioned we've been learning a little bit about each other even though we've known each other for 30 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm more of a, I'll buy cars to sell them occasionally, so I'm cost conscious. What do we have into it overall? What's the current market value? So on and so forth. Uh, we're a little less concerned with that aspect, but also attacking things that in reality probably needed to be addressed, even sure. though I struggled to see the value initially. So yep. I, I think in that regard, we've been making a, a great compliment to each other. Like you said, keeping each other in check to an extent. The only thing we wasted money on was brakes, and that's just because we haven't tracked it yet. But at the time, it seemed like a good idea. We were very yeah. persistent that we were going to track it consistently. Yeah. So it seemed fairly normal. Oh, it's so good. Never gets old. It really doesn't. That exhaust mod is a different speed. It really does. It helps a lot. Yeah, really comfortable car to sit in too with the top down as a passenger. Highway, there's a little bit of buffeting that happens, but overall it's, it's, it's not too bad. The sweet spot is like 60 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour or less. Country back roads. That's our girl. There she is. Had to replace this recently because it was flying out at speed. $19 later. Parts are pretty cheap for this. They are. Yeah, that's nice. And relatively available. We haven't really run into too much that isn't available anymore. We've gone to the dealer for a couple of like small specific stuff, but the prices aren't outrageous. And no. And dealers are marked up more than what you can pay online. Yeah. We're getting a separate set of wheels for the summer tires. So those will be a little bit cleaner. And that wheel will be able to have winters and summers. If we ever want to do a wet drift day on track we can just throw the winners on the rear and slide it around a bit all right one thing i might consider doing soon shifters moving around a lot all the engine transmission diff mounts look good but we might try replacing the differential mount at some point that seems like the weakest link everything else looks pretty fresh and that might be contributing to some of this movement. Also, our roads are just terrible. And a lot of the S2000s that I've driven have a bit of slop in the shifter. I know Miatas do. But I don't think it's at the point where it's going to damage anything with it moving around like that. I don't know if I would have ever noticed it if it weren't for the comments. Yeah. But now that they have pointed it out, I can't stop staring. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now it bothers me. But it never pops out of gear. We haven't missed any shifts. Like, oh. shifting experience has been perfect. At low speeds, 
it's so easy to truck around. At high speeds, it gets a little unstable. <laughs> so we've both owned a lot of cars, you more so than me. This is one of my favorite cars I've ever owned. I think it's right up there with my NA8 Miata that I just, I love that car. I should have sold that thing. Um, I like this more than the BRZ. It's just more fun. For a fun driving experience, it, it's pretty unmatched, I think, as a sports car. Yeah, especially once you're able to pop the top, too. We've been driving it for months without having that ability. Uh, this is refreshing. It's and so good, yeah. You've had a ton of really high power cars, mm -hmm. like you've had Corvettes, Vipers. Um, how does this compare to like some of those crazy horsepower cars? Uh, so it, it's more usable. So we always make the joke about when we were younger, Miata is like the most fun you can have in a car legally. Yeah. Because uh, you can redline it or go full throttle and you look down and you're still not doing the speed limit. Whereas in my Vipers or even the Corvette, one of them, first geared at almost 60 or over 60 so you look down and you're already you know breaking the numerous laws uh, so very different obviously in regards to power and driving experience but it's just small you can chuck it around the viper i was not throwing in the corners necessarily <laughs> yeah powering out um, it, but it's this is more of an exciting car i would say whereas like it kind of gets the spirits going gets a smile on your face you drive it harder more frequently um, whereas the viper would be more of like a heart racing type car if that makes sense sure um, excitement versus scary <laughs> how would you rank this in like the cars you've owned it's that's a tough as a fun to car answer immediately but it would definitely be in the top three really okay cool so my red viper I think it was awesome. I think we tried to do a video of it in the audio. Oh, it was loud. It's the biggest fail ever, yeah. It sounded amazing. Yeah. That was a really fun car. I put like 20,000 miles on that car in two years. Just had an absolute blast owning it. Sold it for what I paid for it. It was a phenomenal experience all the way around. And I didn't have kids, you know, so it was, I drove it all the time. Yeah. Um, that might be number one. But what comes after that, it'd be hard to, hard to specify. It, probably either this or the Grand Sport. Yeah, Grand Sport was good. Um, but this would probably honestly come in second. Really? Yeah, this is a phenomenal car. That says a lot. It does. I think it's the right S2000, though. Sure, yeah, right. you got to get a good one. Yeah, well, and for me, like I mentioned, I like to drive my cars, whether it's a Viper or an S2000, whatever. I like to put a lot of miles on them. So I don't know if I'd be able to enjoy a $40,000 example as much. If that makes sense. So. It was also a refreshing purchase for me coming just off of the Black Viper, which I sold since. Uh, that I, I had a lot of money. It cost a lot of money. I was worried about where I parked it or door dates. I was fighting water spots like it was a small board GT. Yeah, we didn't have to care as much about it. No, it's great. Yep. Yeah, I would agree. Cool. All right, well, I think that'll wrap it up. We said it all. We'll do some more videos on this this summer. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere, yeah. We're going to just keep enjoying this car. Trying to pick up a set of red seats for it. I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Um, need to sort out the seat belt here. It's getting a little bit frayed, so don't want that to be a safety issue. Is that important? Yeah. Could could be uh, could be a bit of a safety concern. It's warming up. It's warming up. We're just gonna enjoy this some more with the top down. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.